was always the kid flipping logs looking for newts and salamanders and all that kind of stuff when we'd go out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I we'd catch tarantulas up in the hills and I'd take them to school and freak out all the girls, you know. We used to catch alligator lizards and have them bite our ears because they'll bite and not let go mm -hmm. for like a half an hour. And so then we, you know, walk around like they were earrings, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Well, in 2008, um, one of the, I used to do, back before that, I used to do children's story at church. Mm -hmm. I'd take a snake or a lizard or something along with me. And one of the parents of the kids there said, hey, would you do something for my kid's birthday? Um, he loves it when you bring stuff to church. So I said, okay, I think I can put something together, and I did, and everybody there said, that is so cool. You ought to look into doing that as a business, because it's the same thing. It's John's Incredible Pizza or a swim party, you know, and this is something different. You can teach the kids and stuff, and so I said, yep, okay. So I looked into it, and within six months, I had my business license and insurance and started advertising, and I said, you know, I have a day job that pays the bills. But I said, if I'm going to use animals, I'm going to do it for the animals. Yeah. And became an official registered reptile rescue. The first um, lizard we had was the Chinese water dragon. Um, the first one that started this kind of thing, my love for big snakes and some of this stuff is, uh, we had a friend who of a friend who had a uh, red-tailed boa. His name was Al Capone. Mm -hmm. And he was about six and a half feet long, and it was the first big snake that I'd had and we'd had a king snake before but you know he literally would sit there over my shoulders with his head on my arm and sit there and watch TV with me <laughs> uh, with his head, head just hanging over my hand like this because he liked the motions on the TV and he'd just sit there and watch TV with me yeah you know and you know that kind of just totally took my love into it you know you know, most of the most of the kids are already interested in it. That's why the parents hire me. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, you know, of course, some of their friends. Not all of their friends are. There's usually at least one person that's scared to begin with. But you know, I start small till I get to the bigger stuff, and then by the time that happens, they've all pretty much been okay. This is not so bad, you know. Uh, it's pretty cool. You know, yeah. Touching, you know, starting out with a little little Kenyan sand boa, and then you know, by the time you get to the reticulated python, they're like, okay, you know. <laughs> but I try to teach them as well as entertain them. We did a party in Merced, and there was this one little girl there that literally was sitting on the back of the couch as far away as possible. And by the time I was done, she was crying because she didn't want me to leave. She just, you know, wanted that so bad. Yeah. You know? And she was literally crying because I was there at first. And then she didn't want me to leave. Yeah. Because she, you know, totally changed her whole attitude about, you know, snakes. And how gentle and actually loving reptiles can be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody in the movies... Every snake, other than in Kung Fu Panda, the snake's the bad guy. And it's instilled into us, drilled into us. Um, whereas it's not that way in real life. I would have to count, <laughs> but uh, approximately 45. Okay. But I have four out of the five top largest snake species in the world. Okay. So. And those are what? Uh, green anaconda is the heaviest. I have one of those. Reticulated pythons are the longest. I have two of those. Mm -hmm. Burmese python are number three, and then an African rock python. That's number three or f Burmese and rocks are three and four, swap in or depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. Well, the one that I was actually the most attached to just died recently. Oh. She was um, a rescue that had come in, and she literally was so weak she couldn't even lift her head off the ground when I picked her up. Mm -hmm. um, and I had her for about eight years. So she was between 16 and 17 years old when she died. But for a snake that, she was a Burmese python, so she should be between 15 and 18 feet long and weigh between 90 and 120 pounds. That would be normal. Mm -hmm. She was seven and a half feet and 20 pounds mm -hmm. with me. When I got her, she was six feet long and six and a half pounds. Okay. I mean, that's how bad off she was. Wow. So um, it's just, 
she was the sweetest, gentlest, loving snake you've ever seen, and she would literally just reach out to me. She'd want to cuddle. That's, I mean, just like you figure a cat. Mm -hmm. She'd sit on your lap and purr, literally. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, she was, she's probably the most famous snake in Fresno. <laughs> <laughs> the teaching. Um, I'm a teacher at heart. Um, I've done it before. Accountant by trade, but teacher by heart, mm -hmm. you know. So um, teaching and changing people's attitudes, you know. Taking the fear to fascination. That's what I that's my little tagline. Taking taking kids from fear to fascination in an hour.